نحمده و نسلی علی رسول الکریم و آلہ طاہرین اما بعد فعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی سید الانبیاء والمرسلین و خاتم النبیین ابلقاسم محمد اللہ صلی علی محمد و علیہ محمد و اجل فرج و علیہ طیبین الطاہرین المنتجبین المعصومین المظلومین الذین ادھب اللہ عنہ الرجس و تاہرحم تطہیرا اللہ صلی علی محمد و علیہ محمد و اجل فرج منسگین اللہ صلی علی محمد و علیہ محمد و اجل فرج و علیہ طیبین الطاہرین المنتجبین المعصومین المظلومین الذین ادھب اللہ عنہ الرجس و تاہرحم تطہیرا اللہ صلی علی محمد و علیہ محمد و اجل فرج ولعنت الله على آدائهم أجمعين من يوم هذا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في قرآنه المجيد وفرقانه الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والله يحب المطاهرين Allah loves the pure and the clean صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وجل فرج I request you to say it three times in a row again اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وجل فرج Of course when I ask the name to recite it I'm also talking to you at home as well to join in with me as well. So once again, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajah. Now, as you may be knowing, and if you don't know, then you should be watching our today's program and our upcoming programs. Over the past few weeks, there's been a certain topic of ours, Isnan. And would you like to tell us, the people watching at home, what that topic was? Cleanliness. Cleanliness, yes, that's right. Cleanliness and purity in Islam. And I'm sure if you are uh, watching at home for our past programs, you must be knowing about this topic. And you must also be knowing that it has been quite a few, uh, quite a while since we've been uh, reiterating this important message. And still, as hard it might, as it might be to believe, we still have not covered everything and all the resources and sources me and Hasnan have brought with us to share and expand your knowledge as well. So we still have a lot more to go through. But another thing to remember is that so far, Hassan, we have talked about the purity and cleanliness of our, of our body, how we smell, our, our, our hair, our teeth, etc. And basically all our superficial and outer values which is on our body. But now, inshallah, we will try to also think what is more important than the body, how we can improve, how we can clean our soul and how pure our Iman is. And uh, that's why I have recited for you um, the, uh, this ayah which I recited at the start of the program, which is the 108th ayah of Surah Tawbah, which is the ninth surah of the Holy Quran. And I'm sure you must be knowing this surah by now because I have recited it, uh, repeated it dozens of times for you at home. And it's, uh, Wallahu yuhibbul mutahireen. Allah loves the pure and the clean. And so for that reason, it's very important to remember that the Quran, Allah Almighty has told us to be clean. That's why it's important for us to go over this topic and take it in such a high esteem. Because after all, not only is Allah Almighty saying in this 108th ayah of Surah Tawbah, but the Prophet wasallam also says that cleanliness is half of Iman. Sen, you remember that? Yeah. Cleanliness is half of Iman. So, it's uh, very important to go over this topic. That's why I keep on repeating and expanding. Of course, every program, there's something new in it. That's how vast the topic is. So, and I request you to recite the salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil Now, before we go on to our main topic, uh, of course, you've already heard Hasnan's voice and me introducing him, talking to him, and his uh, recitation of salawat with me. But uh, just as a formal introduction, I have with me, as you know, my co-pilot, who's with me every time, joins with me and helps me to explain my topic and my message to you at home. 
And that's Muhammad Hasnain Anwar Chaudhary saying Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. And uh, also behind the scenes, making sure that we stay connected to you throughout every week and every uh, flight. We are 100% with you. And controlling all the gears and little TV screens that you have at home is Brother Zain Hassan. So please, therefore, keep me as you know, I'm your host, Muhammad Farjad Anwar Chaudhary. Hassan and Brother Zain Hassan as well in your du'as. And please recite a salawat for our well being. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil Now Hassan, uh, I'm sure you must be remembering and I'm sure the people who have watched our previous uh, programs must be also remembering that uh, earlier on in our, in our previous meetings I mentioned about the roads the road yeah. surface and how we went to uh, Europe yeah. and the roads were dirty and stuff so I, I mentioned that that when driving on a road, we always appreciate and acknowledge the importance of having clean roads and to have uh, proper road signs. Yes, Nan's telling me to do the why as well, and I know that I have to read the why. I just have a little short thing to say, just so people at home can stay tuned with us, because it's very important to uh, uh, catch your attention first and foremost, because you know why is cleanliness is such an important topic. Anyways, as I was saying, we always know the importance and we respect the importance of having clean roads, uh, proper road signs, so stop, turn right, left, and traffic lights. But another thing of a road is the inside of the road, underneath the actual surface. The, of course, potholes, you don't want them, but underneath those, you have the wiring of the traffic lights and you have the uh, sewer system and all the stuff that makes the roads and the electronic signs that, especially when you're on the motorway and you see M40, Birmingham, if it's closed and they have an X. And if those electronic systems and wires aren't working properly, and then the traffic lights won't pro work properly, the signs won't work properly. And of course, we can't see those wires, can you? No, no we can't see them, but they are in fact one of the most important aspects of a road. Because say if um, there were no road lights, there were no traffic lights, what would happen? Everyone would crash cars. Yeah, exactly. There would be chaos. No one would, no one would know what to do. There would be no order. So likewise, similar to that, and like that's why I'm explaining this uh, um, uh, metaphor for you, you can say, it's important for us to remember that we always take care of our outer self, our potholes, you can say. But it's also important to look at our inner wiring, our inner self, and to improve that and to purify that. That is going to be our uh, main under cleanliness topic for today and our upcoming programs. And that can be achieved by good deeds. And of course, good deeds such as reciting the, the, the du'a of Imam Faraj, Ajallah uh, Ta'ala Farajhum, because um, that is our ultimate destination. So before we begin our journey and our main message, as it is our custom and Islam has reminded me, let us pay a word of honor into the most honored one, the awaited, the sacred nur of Sayyidai Kainat, Nuri Rasul for Zande Batul, Imam Zamana Ajr al Ta'ala Farajum. And he, Ajr al Ta'ala Farajum, has said, Rest assured that no one has a special relationship with Allah. Whosoever denies me is not my follower. The appearance of the relief of Al Faraj depends solely upon Allah Almighty. Therefore, those who propose a certain time for my appearance are liars. As to the benefit of my existence in occultation in Ghaibat, it is like the benefit of the sun behind the clouds where the eyes do not see. Indeed, my existence is an amnesty for the people of the earth. Therefore, pray much to Allah to hasten the relief, for therein also lies the release from all your suffering. So now I request everyone with me, Hasnan, and uh, behind the scenes, and you watching at home, to join me in the du'a of Imam Faraj. Allahumma kulli waliyaka hujjat ibn al-Hasan Salawatuka alayhi wa ala bai Fi hazihi saati wa fi kulli sa'an Waliya wa hafiza وقائدا وناصرا وذليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أرضك طوعا وتمتئه فيها تويلا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين 
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajum Once again Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajum now most of the time, I'm sure you must be knowing, uh, most of you at home are probably not uh, Arabic speaking and fluent in Arabic. So therefore, I would like to tell you the meaning of this beautiful dua so we can attain its full values and benefits. So Allah, it is said, O oh Allah, for your visigerant, the proof, the son of al Hasan, send your blessings on him and on his forefathers in this hour and in every hour. Be for him a guardian, a protector, a leader, a helper, a proof and an eye, until you make him live on the earth in obedience to you and allow him to live therein for a long time. With your mercy, O most merciful of the merciful. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa jil farajan. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa jil farajan. And now, Hasnan, uh, I've uh, recited quite a lot and I've already uh, did a little introduction, you can say, not the main topic, but an introduction to today's uh, uh, meaning. But um, also, um, we ha it's also important to start with the uh, mention of Allah Almighty, because He is the Creator and the greatest benefactor. So, for that, I'll have a, a beautiful hum prepared for you. So, I request Hasnan to recite a salawat and then hopefully join in with me when I'm reciting the hamd as well. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajum Once again Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajum Of course you should always remember not to feel um, angry or uh, disappointed when someone asks you to recite salawat again Of course I know Hussain you're not But I'm just saying for the benefit of our viewers Because uh, the benefits and the um, Values of recite blessings of reciting the Rushi are very important, and Islam also has some blessings for us. But before that, uh, some a little hamd of uh, Allah Almighty after a salawat once again. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa jil Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa jil Hasbi Rabbi Jallallahu Allah Allah Ma fi kalbi ghayru Allah 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 Hasbi Rabbi Jallallahu Allah Allah Ma fi kalbi ghayru Allah 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 O Allah the Almighty Allah Allah Protect me and guide me, Allahu Allah, to your love and mercy, Allahu Allah, Allah. Ya Allah, don't deprive me, Allahu Allah, from beholding your beauty, Allahu Allah. Oh my Lord, accept this plea, Allahu Allah, Allah. Hasbi Rabbi Jallallah, Allahu Allah. Ma fi kalbi ghayr Allah, Allahu Allah, Allah. Wo tanha koon hai, Allahu Allah. Badshah wo koon hai, Allahu Allah. Mehrba wo koon hai, Allahu Allah, Allah. Kya unchi shan hai, Allahu Allah. Uski sab nishan hai, Allahu Allah. Sab dilon ki jaan hai, Allahu Allah, Allah. Hasbi Rabbi Jallallah, Allahu Allah. Ma fi kalbi ghayr Allah, Allahu Allah, Allah. Hasbi Rabbi Jallallah, Allahu Allah. Ma fi kalbi ghayr Allah, Allahu Allah, Allah. Hasbi Rabbi Jallallah, Allahu Allah. ما في قلبي غير الله 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 اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وأجل فرجهم once again the salawat اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وأجل فرجهم
Of course, we have recited salawat numerous times and I did promise you at home that we will be telling you some virtues of the Sharif. And just to not keep you in hanging, it's important for uh, us to know the virtues. So Asnan has a, a beautiful virtue for us about the Sharif and salawat, which is the same thing. So I request everyone to recite the salawat before he tells us that. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa Raisin of sweetness in honey. Once the Holy Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam inquired from the honeybee, How do you prepare honey? She submitted, O oh, the dear beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wasallam, we go to the flower gardens and suck nectar out of all kinds of flowers. Then, carrying that nectar in our mouth, we come to our hive and spew it there. That is why it is called honey. The Holy Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, The nectar of flowers happens to be tasteless and the honey is sweet. Therefore, tell me as to where does the sweetness in honey come from? The honey bee submitted, we have been taught by nature the divine power to cover all the way right from our garden to our honey hive, reciting the Rujli unto you, the Holy Prophet This deliciousness and sweetness of honey is due to the auspiciousness of our recitation of the Rujli on the Holy Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajum. Once again, please. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajum. Every time I tell you to recite the Rushif once again, I want you to recite it louder and with more oomph and vigor than last time. So once again, salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajil farajum. Now I am hopeful that you at home have remembered our today's aim, admitted aims, in the form of the Quranic verse which I recited at the start, which is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Wallahu yuhibbul mutahirin. Of course, it's very important to reiterate this, even if you have remembered it, just saying it again and again sort of imprints it on the mind of a person, especially you at home, the viewers, who maybe have not read it as much as I have whilst practicing for um, this program. So, Wallahu Yuhibbul Mutahirin is today's ayah for our aim, which is cleanliness. And now it's uh, important to remember that I know a lot of different people have different uh, uh, stages who think differently of cleanliness. They always um, sta have a different standard of cleanliness. That was the word that I was missing. So, everyone has a different standard of cleanliness in their day to day lives. Some people may. Um, wash their clothes daily, some people may wear the same clothes every week, some, pe some people may have a shower every day, some people may have a shower once a week, but it's also, it's important to remember that, oh, another, talking about standard of clean, cleanliness, it just reminded me that recently, for example, another standard of cleanliness is that I just got my braces off and as soon as I got them off, I started brushing my teeth uh, much more. I, obviously, when you start, when you get a new thing, like a uh, of course, they're not new, but it's the first time I've had them off without uh, braces. So um, I started brushing my teeth a lot. And that just shows you how the standard of cleanliness is for different people. So don't, what well, my point is to say is that don't wait for something to happen in your life, something bad to happen, God forbid, or uh, something different to happen in your life. Then you will start changing your ways and your habits. It's also, it's important to start changing it from the start. It's, uh, of course, um, prohibition, prohibition is better than treatment or something like that. So um, for ex you should start cleanliness before uh, it starts to kick in the effects of untidiness. So my point is everyone has different um, uh, standards of cleanliness and it's important to maintain the highest standard of cleanliness because in Islam, of course, most people appreciate cleanliness. When you go out, when you meet people, they appreciate if you smell good. They acknowledge it. Some people, some people might even say, oh, you're smelling good today. But in Islam, it is uh, compulsory to have a high standard of hygiene. So the different standards that people have of hygiene, 
they should change that if it's too low and make it high and uh, correct with the correct standards of hygiene in Islam. For example, when um, my brother Faraz Bhai, when he moved into his new house, I'm sure Hussain must be knowing because he's very close to him, but when he moved into his new house, he called us at home and he said that uh, the, the house is quite dirty and of course he called, then he called the landlord and he said that if, if it's alright with you, I would like to get a cleaning, uh, someone who can clean the house because it was very messy, clean the house and uh, chip in. He had two housemates and he wanted them to chip in so the pay was split equally between them. But they said, uh, no, we don't want to pay with you to, for the cleaning. Uh, for the cleaner to come in and to clean the house and my dad just said to him instead of arguing creating bad tensions and bad rifts between your housemates you are going to be living them for, off for a long while after all you should just take we'll just pay for it and then if they can see the difference after they come to back home and if they can see how clean it's gone then they will of course pay you so after they he had cleaned it when they came home then we went to visit him recently it was like uh, a week or two back yeah a week back, Hussain knows. Uh, and we, when, whilst we were entering, he, he said, Faraz Bhai opened the door and we saw his housemates cleaning the house and spraying air freshener and such. So that just shows us that when you do a good deed, when you clean something, when you make yourself clean, it influences other people in a good way, inshallah, and it will, inshallah. So that's why it's very important, even if you think, oh, why should I remain clean when when I go to the mosque, everyone else smells bad or whatever, uh, God forbid, then why should I try and make myself clean when no one else gives any care about their appearance? It's not like that. If you make yourself a good person, if you make yourself clean, of course this, uh, this uh, saying or this concept goes with everything. If you are good in something and you act good in something, if you behave nicely, other people who are around you will be positively influenced by your uh, behavior and also behave nicely. For example, Hassan, I know you recently became a prefect. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. And he also did a school council speech and yeah. got 90% of the votes, which is very good. But when you're a prefect, it's important for you to... Doesn't your teacher say that? What do you have to do for a prefect? You have to stand out of the crowd. You have to, exactly. You have to stand out to the crowd and you and have to you behave. And you have to step up to fight. Yeah. If anything goes wrong, you have to step up. And you have to make behave good. Make sure, yeah, behave good. Better than other people. And, and why, why is that? That's because a prefect is something uh, the other students look up to. So likewise, if a snan behaves good, if, he, if another prefect behaves good, just making it in general terms, if a prefect or someone uh, other than you or someone else, which is maybe someone, if someone looks up to someone, if they behave good, then the other people will be influenced positively by that. And so that's why we should all try to be clean so we can ex in, uh, affect our environment as well. Am I right, Hassan? Yes. Okay, Hassan's listening, but I'm sure you'll be listening at home as well very carefully to what I have to say. Because after all, Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, Wallahu yuhibbul mutahireen. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, says that cleanliness is half of Iman. So technically we should spend half of all our shows uh, talking about cleanliness. That's why we've tried to cover it in such a vast uh, time period. Now, Hussain, uh, talking about cleanliness and purity, one of the main uh, providers and um, nutritional things that we have in our day-to-day -day lives is water, right? And uh, Hassan has for us the importance of pure water and how we can get pure water. But before that, I'm going to let you get a sip of water in our little break. So please remember to join us afterwards, drink whatever you want, uh, have a little break. But don't go anywhere and join us afterwards. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad wa ajjayl farjhum 
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد واجل فرجه Now, why do we uh, start all our meetings with salawat? Why do we recite salawat in the middle of all our meetings and at the end of all our du'as and in the beginning of all our du'as? Is because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam has said that when reciting du'as and when presenting something in the court of Allah Almighty, recite, start it with salawat and end it with salawat and recite salawat in, in between it. So once again, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa jil farjum. And it's also very important to remember that one of the titles of the Holy Prophet ﷺ is that of Tahir. And for us, for us to be uh, attained Taharat, for us to attain Taharat, it's important to pay a lot of salutations into the court of the Prophet ﷺ. So that via him we can attain taharat because taharat and cleanliness are two different things. Taharat in Islam is much has much higher esteem than normal cleanliness of like having a shower. So for that reason, it's important for us to keep pay homage to the court of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam, and that can be done in the form of salawat, which we do recite uh, every few moments in our meetings, and also in a beautiful naat or which you have, which I also have prepared for you today. So again, as salawat, Allah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa jil farjum. And now I'd like to recite. Uh, uh, a pain to the court of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam, a beautiful knot, and hopefully you'll enjoy that too. After a salawat, please ascend. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa jil farjum. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa jil farjum. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa jil farjum. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa jil farjum. Thank you very much, Hassan. And uh, now I'd like to recite them. Not. Apni damani shafat me chupai rakna. Nidamani shafat me chupai rakna. Apni damani shafat me chupai rakna. Apni damani shafat me chupai rakhna Meri sarikar, meri baat banai सरकार मेरी बात बनाए रखना अपने दामाने शफात में छुपाए रखना सरकार मेरी बात बनाए रखना मैंने माना कि निकम्मा हूँ मगर आप कहूँ मैंने माना कि निकम्मा हूँ मगर आप कहूँ 
मुझने कम मे को भी सरकार निभाए मुझने कम को भी सरकार निभाए रखना जराए खाक को खुर्शीद बनाने जराए खाक को खुर्शीद बनाने वाले खाक हूँ मैं मुझे कदमों से लगाए लगाए रखना मेरे सर का मेरी बात बनाए रखना इसी मन सब तलब गार हूँ मैं भी आका इसी खैरात का तलब गार हूँ मैं भी आका खाक हूँ लगाए रखना मेरे सर का मेरी बात बनाए रखना आपकी याद से आप आपकी याद से आबाद है दिल में राहू बंदा पर मेरी हस्ती को बसाए सर का मेरी बात बनाए रखना आप याद आए तो फिर याद नाए आप याद आए तो फिर याद नाए कोई गैर की याद मेरे दिल से भुलाए रखना गैर की याद मेरे दिल से भो
जब सवाने जे पे खुर्शीद कयामत आए जब सवाने जे पे खुर्शीद कयामत गार पे साए रखना अपनी जुल्फों के गुनागार पे साए रखना जब सवाने खुर्शीद कयामत आए अपनी जुल्फों के गुनागार पे साए रखना मेरे सर बात बनाए रखना उनके हो जा हर एक चीज उन्हीं से मांगो उनके हो चीज उन्हीं से मांगो अपने दामन में न एहसान पर रखना अपने दामन पर रखना उनके हो जाओ हर एक चीज उन्हीं से मांगो अपने दामन सरकार मेरी बात बनाए रखना शायद इस से खालिद मेरे आका शायद इस से खालिद मेरे आका गुजरे अपनी पल को सरे बिछाए शायद इस रा 
I pray that Allah Almighty and the Holy Prophet وسلم, accepts this humble uh, dua and salawat into his um, uh, court. And now I'll request Hassan to tell us more about the purity and how water is, can be pure and how it, it has to be pure in Islam. So I'll request you to say that after a salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa jil As you all know, I was, for the last past weeks, I was reading about water, about clean water, dirty water, and how, is, how it is cool water. Yeah, thank you very much. Running water. Running water is that water which springs forth from the earth and then flows like the water of a spring or a canal the flowing or running water even if it is less than gur does not become najis upon contact with any najasat unless its smell color or taste changes due to the najasat if the najasat reaches the running water only that part of that water will be najis, whose smell, color, or taste changes on account of it, and that end which is connected with the spring will be bark, even if it may be less than a quill. Similarly, the water on the other side of the canal will be bark, if it is equal to a quill, or if it is connected with the water near the spring through unchanged water. If not, then it would be nudges. A spring does not run or flow, but replaces water every time water is drawn from it. it will not be treated as running water. That means if Najasat reaches it, and if it is less than it goes, it will become nudges. If water at the bank of a canal is stationary but is connected with running water, it will not be considered as running water. If a spring is active in winter but remains dormant in summer, it will be treated as running water only when it is active. Salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ajjil farajun And Hussain talking about uh, the clean and pure water It is reminding me about the purest of all waters The holiest of all waters Which is the springs of Abi Zamzam And mashallah now is the time for Hajj as well And people are going on the Hajj pilgrimage Which is one of the five pillars of Islam Very important to remember that And of course 
Allah Almighty has told us whilst going for Hajj to leave everything behind, wear simple clothes, shave your hair and stuff. But the harat and purity is still essential whilst going for Hajj, which is in the most purest of all places, Mecca, and of course uh, Umrah, which is the most purest of places in Medina as well. So, and after that, to attain purity and taharat, it's important to remember those personalities which have been uh, said by Allah to be uh, Tahir and Mutahir, which is the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and then say the Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayhi who has, who has been given the title of Tahira. So it's very important to keep in mind those personalities, and I'm sure you know who I'm talking about, those personalities which Allah Almighty has ordained so before we end our today's and show and wrap it all up, I request us to pay five salutations to the court of these five personalities. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad wa ajil farajhum. Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra salamu alayha. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad wa ajil farajhum. Imam Ali karamallahu jil kareem alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad wa ajil farajhum. Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad wa ajil farajhum. And Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad wa ajil farajhum. So now I'll request everyone to keep us in your du'as. Please pray for us and recite lots of durushi for our well-being. And please join us next week as well for next week's show. But for now, Khuda Hafiz.